The next speaker is Richard Hartmann, and he will be talking about the FOSTEM infrastructure and give a review, review about it. And please welcome Richard Hartmann. Thank you. Uh, I didn't. Uh, just a second, let me unify my output. No. Okay, I need to look in the other direction, doesn't matter. Or maybe, maybe. Okay, I shouldn't have that. Ah, no, it works. Sorry, sorry. I should have done this earlier. Okay, so infrastructure review. Um, the, the subtitle is, is very important. Uh, this is like the third year in a row when we didn't have any major incidents, uh, which, and, and things are settling down. Uh, same as always, I'm going to give a quick overview of, of basically the current state, because we always have new people and also what changed over the years. And then un, uh, uncommonly for lightning talks, we actually have questions. So uh, we will be passing the mic around. So anything you want to know, uh, you're more than welcome to ask. So um, this is almost the same talk as last year and the year before, which is really, really good for us. Um, of course, this means um, we, uh, it, it becomes a little bit more and more settled. Uh, I started uh, doing infrastructure, taking over the video team and such, uh, video network for the active network, 2015-ish. Uh, um, and everything was on fire all the time, uh, at the same time in all the places, which obviously was not very nice on, on our nerves and sleep cycle and everything, and that got majorly improved. Um, we actually, like, literally in those 20 years when we had FOSTEM, this is the third year where staff could actually sit down and not run in circles all the time. Like, the last 17 years before that were maybe not as nice. Uh, I could even spend half a day in my dev room, like, yay, uh, without having, having to run to, to, take, uh, to put out fires. Um, and... Like the, the first year we had this, people were super nervous because something is about to happen, something must break, everything is working, this is not normal, and people are getting more relaxed, which is, again, really good for, for us. So we have this place of stability. We don't need to throw everything out the window and re-implement within a week. Like we, we have a place of stability, and we actually really get to get a lot of sleep when compared to the years before, which is really, really nice. Core Infra is basically the same as last year. We still have the ASR 1006, uh, which is doing um, all the net stuff. It's doing ACLs, it's doing DHCP, it's doing all the VLANs uh, for the Wi-Fi, it's doing the uh, BGB upstream to cold. Uh, we have the same two servers, which are now really fully Ansible, so we actually redeployed them last week and nothing broke, which was super nice. Well, actually one dashboard broke, but else, like, we, we are at the place where we can really have this conference out of a box and be really quick about it. Our monitoring is still Prometheus and Grafana. We are super happy with this. And uh, we put the public dashboard uh, on, on the Cortex cluster by Grafana. So that's backed by some actual, uh, like, we, we don't get hammered into death uh, when, when I tweet about dashboard Fostum org. Like, it actually stays stable, which is nice. Um, the video box, have, uh, they also have a completely new version, or somewhat new version. Um, you can see all the updates in the, uh, in the repository, and also there is a talk which ended, I think, like 40 minutes ago, um, where they go into detail about how those things are actually done. Same as last year, uh, those video boxes stream into um, the render farm, which we'll be seeing a picture of in a few seconds. And those also transcode everything for streaming off-site, and from there it's duplicated to everyone who wants to, who wants to watch the videos. And anyone who is, uh, who is a speaker or a dev room manager, you will get uh, emails pointing to S-Review, which allows you to self-cut your, your, your talks, which is super nice. If any of you are organizing conferences, this is really, really nice, because... You have the overview of the different audio streams. You have, if you have several video streams, you can choose what do you want to see. When does it start? When does it end? Does this need some improvement? Maybe, maybe it needs some cleaning up of the audio track. You can give this feedback to the video team. They can clean up, do whatever, republish it for, for your uh, cutting, and then you can put exactly where your talk starts, where it ends, 
uh, which is super nice because else uh, we would have to do literally hundreds and hundreds of reviews, which I think the record was we got more or less done uh, after the next FOSDEM, which kind of sucked. So um, paralyzing this and giving this to the actual speakers and deaf room manager is super, super nice. Of course, this means we can, we can paralyze. And if you're doing conference, I highly suggest you do something similar. Render farm. Um, yes, it is literally a, uh, a, a heap of, of ThinkPads. Um, same as uh, the years before, we buy those bulk off of eBay, all the same model. Um, we use them this weekend, and then we sell them at cost uh, at the info desk. That usually happens on a Saturday, so if you want to have a cheap laptop, which is also has been used for FOSDEM, uh, you can get it. We even leave the data on them, of course, it's not secret data. Um, and the nice thing is every year we get a quicker machine, of course, every year we just buy like the next uh, delta of, of machine. These are the X2 250s. Um, yeah, and it works. And also like it, it scales really nicely. If you have 10 more dev rooms, just put a few more laptops and that's it. And they have built-in UPS, so if you have a power outage, they actually keep on running, which is also nice. Yep. Um, one thing we did change is uh, we changed uh, our Dean S64 to Core DNS, which is super brand spanking new. Uh, ben literally cut not even a release, like he's one of our team members is a maintainer of Core DNS. And this is an experimental branch running DNS 6.4 just for here, and it worked, and we load tested it, or you all load tested it a little, uh, and we actually had 50% reduction in CPU usage as compared to bind. Uh, of course, everyone hates bind. I mean, it, it works, and it, it keeps the internet alive, but no one likes it. Uh, some timelines. Router installation is more or less static. That's totally fine. Network up, we actually improved by one full hour. Uh, for the passive cabling, which was super nice. Um, like, as you can see, like the, the 2015 one, uh, that was really bad when I, got, when I got to leave here at like five in the morning and things half worked. Back then we had two opening talks, one with we have network and one we are sorry, we don't have network. So things really improved. Same for the monitoring. Monitoring actually was here year round. The servers ran through uh, and except for that redeploy, we had monitoring 24 seven for the whole year. It didn't monitor a lot, but like we, we had it running. So that's also super nice. Video team also improved. 2016 was kind of icky course. We lost quite some, quite some video content, as you can see, uh, like 26 rooms times two hours, that hurts. Um, so they also get more sleep, like literally a few of the video team uh, slept in, in the knock a few years ago. So that all this gets better, which is, is nice. Uh, for next year, we want to have centralized locking uh, through Loki, so everyone can see what's happening at the same time. Uh, all the video boxes and such will also do uh, all their logging to a central instance where you can go deeper into stuff. We have a dashboard. I invite you to hammer it so it, gets, uh, it goes down, but it doesn't go down, but hammer it if you want. Um, Pretty much all our stuff is in there or in the video uh, thing. And also we are actively um, talking to people, trying to help them bootstrap their own conferences. We actually had several uh, groups of people which we showed through all our info desk, knock and such. So they get a feeling of how we do things and explained how to, how to run a conference. If you have a conference, which is obviously same in, in intention and, and stuff like FOSDEM, like fully open source, uh, no major uh, interests by, by, any, by any companies, like a, a community thing, feel free to talk to us. Uh, we are actively trying to reach out and, and try and spread this to other places. That's it, and I hope you have a, I hope you have a few questions. Thank you. There's one. Just want to know how to get one of those sweet ThinkPads. Uh, the ThinkPads, um, on Saturday at, I think, 10 or 11.30, uh, we have a sale at InfoDesk K every year. 
I don't know if that's the exact time. So if you want one next year, like for this year, they're already gone. But for next year, um, be at the info desk early-ish on Saturday and just ask when, when that sale is. And yeah, basically that's it. Yeah, for this year it's too late. Like they're gone super fast because it's like 40 laptops or 30 for I don't know how many thousand attendees. So yeah. yeah. Hi, uh, thank you for all the great work. Is there any data on how much the uh, NAT64 has been used? Uh, do we see more native IPv6 data? And is that somehow related to the drop in, no. proportional drop in, uh, uh, in CPU usage for the, for the NAT64? Ah, no, uh, so, um, so first, to answer the second question first, uh, we ran bind during this weekend and we switched over during this weekend, so we could compare directly. So these are actual directly uh, numbers which directly relate to each other. Uh, as to the first question, we have two networks. One is dual stack, one is completely IPv6 with NAT64 and DNS64. Um, most of the traffic we see is uh, IPv6 only. That's already the case since last year. I actually dropped that slide because it's been the same for the last two years that we are basically IPv6 has more or less won. Um, the major IPv4 usage we see is mainly VPNs, which we uh, think are stuck on either uh, literal octets in the configuration or uh, old versions of OpenVPN or something which just didn't support IPv6. But most traffic these days is IPv6, except for what we think is VPN traffic. Yeah, so do you also lock the video streams? I mean, that a couple of years ago, there was a lot of talk about, oh, if it was on YouTube, it was a flash, it was proprietary, Adobe, and you're also streaming in WebM, so, which is open source. Is there any difference, or does user care today? Uh, you, you mean the content of the people who, who, who make the talks, or? I, I... Yeah, yeah, but also okay. how much people are watching it on the net. Do you have any statistics? About ah, that. statistics yeah, of yeah. We, uh, yes ish uh, we do, but um, not in a nicely integrated system. Um, we are moving more and more stuff into into uh, into our observability platform. Uh, we kind of have a split between video team and infrastructure team. Um, so the video team is is independent in what they do, but they keep uh, adding more stuff uh, to our observability. So we also have more insight into what's actually happening. And all of that data is completely public on, uh, just a second, uh, yeah, dashboard for some org. Like everything we have, everything we use internally, um, you can just use, uh, you can just see this literally the same thing. So what exactly is the render farm used for, and uh, why not use a, or dare I say it at this conference, a cloud provider? So uh, first question, the, what the render farm is used for, um, transcoding video. So we have the raw video, which, like the raw video comes in here. You have to stream from, from this laptop. You have to stream from that camera. Uh, both are dumped on local disk here, and also they are streamed to, uh, to the laptops. They transcode it, uh, they reduce the size basically, um, transcode them uh, for streaming and for another disk dump. And why we are not using a cloud farm? Well, we, we used it, I think, 2014 or 15. We actually used uh, Google Cloud back then because we had some issues and that was quick because we had a few people who could do this quickly. Uh, but we prefer to use open source software and most cloud stuff is not a GPL v3, which means it's not really fully open source in, in the actual intention of, of uh, open source, at least under my or most of us, uh, our interpretation. So we just prefer to do it locally. Also, if ever our internet cuts out, we have everything local, so at least the people who are local could still be watching some stuff. So, but the main reason is ethical reasons. We, we don't want to, to, to export this to somewhere else. The only thing which we really rely on is the Grafana cloud, because um, people destroyed our instance in the early days, and that meant uh, we didn't have monitoring ourselves, and that kind of sucked, so, yeah. No. Anyone else? Oh, which are we? 
Um, any plans to further uh, disin disincentivate the use of uh, uh, FOSDEM dual stack instead of the main uh, plan of the main uh, Wi-Fi SSID? Because I was wondering if uh, if you kept, for example, the SSID stable and people connect to it three years ago and didn't change the laptop, didn't change uh, anything, they will still connect to this one. Um, if you, for example, change from FOSDEM dash legacy uh, dash uh, dual stack to force them underscore dual stack mm, well, they will be forced to do this choice again mm. uh, yes ish we we used to call it legacy for internal political reasons uh, that got changed to um, to to uh, dual stack we don't actually mind if someone is on dual stack and i don't want to break anyone's anyone's connections so people are more than welcome to use uh, dual stack the reason why we have IPv6 only on the main SSID is this is a developers conference. So uh, we want to kind of a little bit push people towards uh, the IPv6 only because uh, they tend to fix stuff. Like we have we had a major distribution fix quite a bit of things once we just started sending all people who had complaints just to that booth and tell them, okay, talk to your distribution because it's their fault. Like they, they fixed it really quickly, but we don't want to be too pushy about it. So... Um, thanks a lot, Richard, for your talk. Yep, thank you. Thank you.